everybody's probably already been to one of these, but for those in case you don't know, this, this is just a, a general community discussion, informal. There's no, we've got a few like discussion points planned, but there's, it, this conversation can go anywhere. You know, it can last, you know, as, as short or as, as up to an hour as we as we need it, as it's over lunch. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're kind of just trying to drive engagement in the community more than anything. So, like, Craig kind of has pushed this a little bit. We've got this set up, and then Jonathan was the first one. He's got more involved in the community, and, and we'll talk a bit about what is one of the first things he's done, actually, in a moment, which was the Ron Preston kind of Q&A. Um, but like for yourself, David, I don't know if you were at the last one. I'm not sure you were, or you might have been. But anyway, you know, if, you, if you're interested in getting more involved in the community, looking for things to do where you can help out, this is the place where we can kind of talk about what's going on, what there is you can do, how you might, you know, what you're interested in kind of doing. Like, there's no kind of hard and fast rule about this. Like, there's no expectancy on anybody. Um, you just kind of, you know, Getting a group of people who are interested and kind of put a bit of motivation to help out to we'll just help spread that load of you know, the different things that we need to do across the community. So, um, yeah, I mean, last time we talked about kind of a, a range of things, really. Um, there's bits around kind of the idea of getting a bit more of a professional website up and running, so we can talk about that a bit again at some point. Um, there was there was a thing about different kind of event types that we maybe want to plan in, um, like panel type events maybe, and I suppose like we've had one event which was a bit of a new one for us like a QA. and a um, Hi, Yasu. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, I was just, just to kind of bring you up to speed, having just joined, um, I'm just going to give a bit of an introduction, basically just saying that this is about um, just trying to get people together and the, for the Manchester Java community, thinking of talking about how we organise the community and where people are interested in getting more involved, helping you kind of get involved by showing what kind of things you can do to help. Um, so uh, everybody here has hopefully signed up for that reason because they're interested and they want to kind of get involved a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's quite an informal session. We're just going to talk around various different bits and pieces around the community, what's been happening ideas about what we want to do next in terms of events and any other ideas really and different bits and pieces. So just to kind of, uh, I suppose, kick it off, um, we've, we've got a board uh, on GitHub and um, I can share a link to it in the chat actually. Um, and I'm, I've kind of, I've got a bit of a list of items for kind of today's session around things that we might want to talk about. Um, so there's various bits and pieces on there, but the first thing on the list is just a bit of a re review of our last event, which made sense. So this was a, a Q and A that we did with Ron Pressler from Oracle. It was all around Project Loom. So that's something that Craig kind of managed to organise. So that was kind of brilliant, you know, getting that set up. Um, but yeah, I mean, really kind of think talking about how we think that went. There's a video of it on YouTube if you've not seen it, so you can go back and watch that. Um, but yeah, just, you know, thanks to Jonathan for hosting it as well. I think, you know, the first thing I'd say is I think he did a great job, to be honest. I think it went pretty smoothly, um, well, quite nicely. There was, you know, the way you kind of had the questions and then some follow-up questions, the things we were saying, I think worked really well. Um, so that's kind of my kind of impression of it. Generally, I think it was a pretty good event. No one else got any thoughts? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I thought it went really well. Um, good questions from us and then some good questions from the uh, the participants as well so and we could probably take it into like an hour hour and a half easily mm. there, there were loads of questions coming in um, yeah yeah it would have been nice to get a few more attendees but yeah I, I, it was only a week's notice and uh, but yeah I, th I thought John did really well yeah how do you feel John <laughs> um I enjoyed it I really did enjoy it um I must be mad for throwing myself in the deep end <laughs> doing stuff like that, but um, I did enjoy it. And um, it seemed, you know, I suppose I was looking at it from um, a different perspective, but even though, you know, it was, was it a week notice? It yeah. seemed to get more than that 50% uh, of attendance rate, yeah. yeah, which seemed to be pretty good considering it was only a week. So I don't know whether that was the, 
it's hard to try and work it out. Was that the format of the event? Was it the topic? Um, yeah, yeah. I suppose it's hard. It's hard to know. I think probably the possibly the topic, but yeah, it's just guesswork, isn't it? Ultimately, I think. That, yeah. So I think there's two really valid points there. I think there's one is around the Craig move. It's like maybe there was a short time scale, but maybe there's something there around reach of kind of trying to get the volume of actual RSVPs up. And then that fifty percent would be a you know a bigger number in general. But I think yeah, fifty percent is pretty you know, or more is always a good thing with these meetups. Like I've done loads of them now, and there's always a huge drop off rate. Fifty percent is seen as a good kind of retainment of those RSVPs on the day. I would say. The the thing that I found funny was um, we had it on the Twitter feed. We had it on the LJC Twitter Twitter feed. I posted it inside the Meta Mentor Slack, posted inside the LJC Meta Mentor Slack. And I was still talking to people on the day that w weren't even aware that it was going ahead. So right. that's that's why we had a sign up of about maybe four people on the day because they just right. weren't aware. So I said, oh yeah, like by the way, we've got Ron Prez on. Oh yeah, I'll sign up. Yeah. So it's yeah, there's, um, there's something in this actually that like we're probably, I think we've got some, some I think it might have been Ukraine that we didn't know around or it might not be on here, but yeah, the idea of like maybe being a bit more explicit about how we promote our events and understanding what are the channels and how frequently we do do we do it and possibly even automating that process to be honest, because all these all these platforms that we use are API driven, and if we think about like the website, once we get that in place and we're starting to drive content on there, it's not too far removed from having some content that we can then start to share automatically. By, uh, you know, if we're using GitHub, GitHub Actions and stuff. I know that Andy Salmon has just released a thing called JRelease. And it's conceptually the same thing. We're releasing an event. We're not releasing some software. We're releasing a new event onto our, you know, onto to our community, essentially. And if we can automate a lot of the flow there and process around distributing information to all the channels that we want, maybe there's something we can do. But to start with, it's probably just identifying what it is we want to do. And then thinking longer term, can we do something really kind of streamlined and cool that takes some of the load off ourselves as remembering to actually how we need to throw it here uh, every week, every you know, two days before, that kind of stuff. Yeah, the, I, I don't think the one week helped. Um, I, I mean, I, I was speaking to Ron the, a week beforehand, but he, he would take a, a day and a half to get back to me. So I'm like, yeah. I didn't want to push my luck and say, look, I'm sorry to push mm -hmm. you wrong because he's doing us a favor. Yeah, exactly. So I'd like, you know, like leave it a day in a bit and think, oh, I'm, I'm really going to have to get like a yes or a no on this. Well, it so, was one of them, wasn't it? Like when somebody said, yeah, they're going to do it and it's someone like him, you don't want to say, can we push it back? Yeah, yeah. You take the not... opportunity and it is what it is. Yeah. And I think we got, like, and there was um, one comment I saw on Twitter from George Ball, who I, I know from the time of Morgan Stanley. Um, he said it's the best Java meetup he's ever been to. And like he's been working in the Java community for you know tens of years. He's a really mm -hmm. experienced guy. So having that, that felt like a really good kind of um, testimony to the event that we put on. So I'm, I'm it will be interesting in terms of uh, uh, focusing how to get people traction for, for focusing to get people to notice the events. I yeah. mean, I'll give you an example. Um, I'm, I'm working, I've got my personal email, I've got uh, my work email, I've got my client's email. So I've already got three emails. Yeah. Uh, social media, you're talking Twitter, you've got LinkedIn, Facebook. And so it's quite, so, and obviously Slack is, so that's, that's another part of it. Yeah. So it depends how, I mean, for me, for example, primarily I, I use my personal email for all meetups and all these events. And that's what I just focus on. Because the other channels, I just get swamped with a lot of things. So yeah. Yeah. it becomes a preference what people prefer in terms of what's their natural mm -hmm. default primary channel that they prefer. So I suppose there's kind of two, like, well, there's, there's multiple audiences. Like, so we've got our meetup kind of community who are already registered and subscribed to meetup, and they will get email notifications for whatever email Jesse signed up with. So that kind of, when we create an event that happens and they take care of some of the delivery of that repeated message that this event is happening, you know, in a week or two days or whatever it might be. So I suppose the, in theory, if we're hitting that kind of community, we might want to kind of understand how much kind of take up we're getting from that. But then we've also got people who aren't yet in that community. There's that reach outside of it. So yeah, then we're talking about, we don't have their email address, so it has to be something else. It has to be either LinkedIn, social media, whatever it might be, these other kind of sites 
are the only places mm. that are going to have visibility of what we're doing. Is, is there a, a sorry. sorry? Go on. Is, is there a is there a, a general jug Twitter where you can get them to retweet things as well, so it has a, a wider reach, mm. not, so, so sort of beyond LJC? Um, not. There's, there's kind of a couple of different initiatives. There's, there needs to be, as you mentioned it before, okay, but there needs to be like more joined up kind of situation. And I think this is. I shared some stuff before on that worldwide jokes, and I think that is potentially it. That's the thing that's going to, if we can, maybe as a community, we should, you know, we feel, we, we have got an opinion on this, haven't we? So maybe we should try and get into that a bit more and start to drive that worldwide community. And even if that Twitter handle doesn't exist yet, you know, create it and start to try and kind of promote it and use it as a place where we're, we'll have to kind of, you know, Publish things around other people's events. I don't know, but that is, that's probably a whole conversation that's on right. That we it might be worth exploring though. Yeah. So in, in terms of the Q and A style, is, is that something we definitely want to do again? Is that something we want to focus on? Because I mean, I, I I thought it was brilliant, but I don't know what everyone else thinks. I, I think so. Um, personally, I think yeah, it went well, and if we've got the right speaker, interesting topic. I suppose you start with a topic, don't you? That's interesting, then find try and find a speaker. Yeah. But yeah. See me no reason not to. Just I, on that I, sorry, just to um on that topic, I noticed um I think he was doing that twenty six hour stream. Is it Nikolai Parlog? Yeah, yeah. He was doing a session um uh, kind of a was it an AMA? Right. Um on uh it was kind of like um, to do with the stewardship that Oracle have over over Java, and the, I think Ron touched on it. The, the deliberations they go through when they're adding certain things, you know, the the time it takes to think long and hard about the changes they're making. And it was he had a good session title, and I did think would he be a good person to get on that kind of follows that theme of here's a here's a the call java language you know here's how decision changes are made to it because that's where i found fascinating finding out more about what they had to touch in that um that ron said about project loom maybe yeah. that's something we go along and having a more of a q a follow that kind of theme further i've reached out to the in the past and we didn't really get anywhere because of this was before you know zoom calls became the default really um so obviously like travel expenses, all that kind of stuff, it was just a non-starter for us. It's not a million money to kind of pay his way over. So maybe the yeah, maybe there's something we can kind of do there and he might be up that. I know he works for all from that, doesn't he? Like he might be kind of developer of the style uh, role. So he'll be right up the street, hopefully. Um, yeah, I noticed he's doing a he's doing a bunch of German jugs with this session, you see. So okay. I thought it might be uh he might be, um, and I, I have had, um, I think his boss Chad email me recently right. um, about Jay Bake, right. um, and I did think about maybe leveraging that connection, you seeing if to, any. Yeah, if you want to do that and kind of explore that, please. Yeah. That sounds like a really good idea. I think that's that's what I've found like over the kind of over the like three four years that I've been involved with the community is like you got get once you get past that kind of a bit of anxiety and that barrier around reaching out to people you start you know you find that people are really kind of enthusiastic about sharing what they've got and you start to build a bit of a network as well and connections like some of the people you meet you know it just it all it's all good and it all improves kind of you know you as a person your kind of you know career prospects all that kind of stuff's really good you kind of make these good connections so i really encourage anyone if they've got you know that you know interest or you've got a bit of a kind of connection with someone try and explore it and see where it goes because it's, it's worth it i might reach out to nikolai then about yeah. that um just extending that q a thing as well um have you run much i suppose trying to get more feedback from the the meetup group about you know some i don't know questionnaire about what they'd like to see i don't know whether it's a something that people would be interested in responding to just to see if we can find out because i found the q a with ron 
we got a real good influx of questions because uh, that was an, an area that I was I was conscious that if we don't get many questions from the audience, this could be quite short. Um, we had Craig. Got loads. We always had Craig as a backup. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've in the past we have sent out um, surveys and we kind of used to incentivize the surveys with the IntelliJ license. So we'd say like, if you're filling the survey for us, you're getting the hat for the license, basically. Um, it's all it's all boils down to admin, and like those things dropped off when it was it became like just less people really kind of actually trying to drive these. But if we've got people who've got time and they're happy to kind of you know drive these things, I'm I'm more than happy to do that. And I I, I think you can possibly tie that in with some sort of um, newsletter, something we send out every I don't know four months, every six months, and say right. The, these are links to recordings that we've had for recent meetups. If, if you've missed them, you know, this, this is what you've missed. You know, we've had Ron Prez, we've had somebody on to talk about OWASP, we've had somebody on to talk about security and all the rest of things. And oh, and by the way, if you'd like to influence who we bring on, please, please fill us in, get in touch with us, let us know who you'd like. Um, just yeah. try and get a bit more feedback from people um, and, and see, see what other people would like. Because it, it feels purely selfish for me at the moment because I'm just cherry picking who i want on to, yeah, to speak yeah. to but i, I think I, I i guess a lot of people would want them on as well yeah i was gonna say i've had to be very conscious of that like over the past kind of year or so and not it not just being all kind of kubernetes ops java like, <laughs> like kind of that you have to try and kind of think a bit wider than yeah yourself but actually asking the, the community is the best way to do that and um, let them speak you don't you know Sometimes it's hit and miss, you don't always get that big a response. But the people who do respond, they get the chance to hear the talks that they're interested in ultimately, don't they? So, yeah, because awesome. I've got zero interest in any of the soft skills stuff. Um, but I, I, I attend because it's I'm, I'm still part of the community. So you, yeah. you, you still turn up and hopefully maybe ask an interesting question at the end. But it, in terms of personal preference, I, I've got zero interest in any of that. So I didn't want to overly influence it where everything was really technical and then it sort of skews the audience because they don't want to come and listen to a topic about you know internals of zgc or something like that yeah no that's cool so i think unless there's anything else on that kind of point i think in general what we're saying is it was a good event we should do more of them um so that's kind of great john's gonna explore maybe one of those options which is similar on a similar vein which is nikolai Carlock. Um, see where that goes. Um, we need to. See, I think this, the more there's a more general point that we kind of got in there, which is more about kind of how we publicise our events and make sure we're kind of getting them out there. Because I, I, in the past, I've just put a tweet out, and I might remember to do another. I might not, and that's kind of it's as it's as loose as that. And sometimes I don't even put the tweet out. Like for today, I've not shared anything. So that's kind of how that happens at the moment. It's just the best effort. So we could do better, basically, around those things. But with more people, it makes it easier. And if we can automate it, even better, because then it's you know zero effort. Yeah, my my wife's a social media manager, so I'll ask her about that. She oh, she, right. she like, <laughs> schedules all that stuff for her clients. So I'll right. see if there's any uh, advice she can give us. Yeah, no, that sounds good. I bet there's like, I bet I imagine the platforms you can use. I remember that there is some stuff that I've seen Hootsuite or something. That's interesting. Yeah, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, we want place, it to be. Uh, Sorry, go. Uh, also, I had a colleague interested in Quarkus, and I pointed to the YouTube uh, recording on uh, Quarkus. So uh, I, I first started this because I've got to collect Java programmers, and I think we should raise more awareness uh, uh, of all these uh, events because uh, there's not much attendance. And also yeah. in, on YouTube channel, you need to reach 100 now. Uh, it's still a subscription. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I try to uh, to let to if so I actually I, I don't target. I try to concentrate my effort on uh, people which are actually interested because then if you put it on Twitter or anything, it's like a lot of noise. But uh, yeah. not a lot of people respond. So if I if I knew that he. I knew this uh, guy was interested in, interested in Quarkus. I said, look, is this uh, uh, very nice on the YouTube channel and could you please uh, subscribe and he's from Manchester. And right. I have better, so yes, we should uh, think how to 
raise um, awareness of these events and publicize more. Yeah, totally agree. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to have our own kind of Manchester Dev really channel, which is well named, wouldn't it? Um, and everything with the URL. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe this is something we should kind of take into. Sorry, that's my Slack. Uh, we should take into a conversation in our Slack channel and start kind of bouncing some ideas around around how we you know, what channels do we want to promote to, and how do we kind of get that you know the message out? Not just about events, but then maybe some semi-regular kind of tweets about you know different videos we've got and asking people to maybe even just need a bit of an initial kind of hit to say please subscribe to our channel you know just ask people that and like get a bit of retweet kind of going from various people we might just get above that 100 pretty quickly what, what about doing a one-off email to the whole group saying by the way here's yeah. our youtube channel do you mind subscribing yeah that would just say you know exactly yeah. why we want you to subscribe as well because that might just kind of People get it, it doesn't cost anything, does it, for people to just click a subscribe button? No. Yeah, and, and just a one-off thing, you know, you don't want to annoy people all the time saying, please, can you like and subscribe? Don't forget to hit the bell, blah, blah, blah. You don't. But yeah, yeah. just a, just a one-off email to say, by the way, we have this channel. You'd like a few more numbers. You know. Probably yeah. should, following on what Magda said then, is um, do more tweets on promoting the set past sessions that are available on YouTube, you know just uh, drive a bit more usage and just get people into the idea that we have got our sessions recorded they're available online yeah I've, I've got a feeling that once we start getting some interesting guests guests that aren't really on the, the, the talk circuit coming in to do q and a's I, I think the numbers will start going up so, so certainly from our perspective you you end up seeing the same people going round and round talking about sort of the same thing so you're like oh i've already seen this at like another jug or but the stuff that I haven't seen is what what we'd like to do, like bringing people on for these Q and A sessions, which, for me anyway, is a more interesting format, um, and especially be giving people, giving people the opportunity to ask questions directly to somebody who's working on like a very interesting project. Yeah. So. Yeah, I totally agree. I'll just share this link to Slack in there because I think I don't know if you're in there, Yasin, but um, that'll be. Somewhere we, we're kind of general, yes, we're having kind of general conversations, things are just ongoing. So we have these catch ups like monthly, but there'll be things happening through the month that we, we're trying to collaborate on and we take that a bit more kind of asynchronously. Um, Thanks, so, yeah, yeah, if you're up for it, yeah, please, you're welcome to join and um, get, in, get involved. So, yeah, I mean, um, sorry, I was just going to say that I'm, I'm really for, um, looking forward to, to, I mean, the reason I, I came and joined, um, I'm, I'm an associate, the Java developer starting on my first project on Java, oh, right. working on digital. So the, the, the more exposure I get uh, networking and getting to know things, definitely that will, will help. Yeah. And I've already sent the link uh, for my internal team, if anyone is interested, apparently they're busy, I mean, breaking, but yeah, right. try to see if uh, more people come in. That sounds good. Are you, are you Manchester based then as well? Yeah, Manchester, yeah. I know. Manchester. Yeah. So at some point, hopefully we can all uh, get in person over, you know, before, yeah, hopefully. For the years out, maybe who knows? Hopefully. It seems that the the the, the lifting the, the pandemic rules are it's just like sun shifting now. Another four weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just need to get those people from Bolton to get their act together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm okay. to Manchester tomorrow going to cause some damage. So anyway, um, to kind of moving on, just looking at what we've got. Then there was a couple of things that. Be interested to kind of talk about so future guests so we've got a few potential guests kind of lined up so i've got we've got melissa mckay from jfrog so there's a couple of talks that she's proposed let me just dig them out so we can just look a bit of a kind of a summary on what they are and i think we're at the point now with, with her is just to decide what we want to hear about and i suppose that's up to us as the people on this call more or less other people involved in the community we can kind of make a decision on that but we've got there's a talk about level up your java container images so that's obviously talking about docker and java and docker and different kind of things about that i feel like we've done that kind of talk a couple of times in the past year or so anyway um so i'm a bit kind of hesitant to kind of go with that but if there's a real kind of interest in it you know Fine. But that, that'd be my kind of view. We've had a couple of similar talks already this year. Then there's a crash course in service mesh solutions. So this is kind of 
probably stepping away from Java specifically a bit and talking more about the you know the concepts around a service mesh and microservice architectures, what value they give, you know, what they are essentially. Um, looking at Istio and Linkerd as two implementations. Then the the third one is a DevOps that matters, demystifying CI, CD, and build pipelines. So that's kind of diving into DevOps. But I feel like we've done we we had um, Burak, I think he was called another uh, person from JFrog talk about DevOps um, a few months back, and that's possibly a bit kind of similar again. So the only other thing they've proposed, which sounds potentially interesting, is to do a two-hour DevOps for Java developers hands-on workshop. And that's going to be focused, I think, around like the JFrog artifactory kind of tooling and kind of building out a little Java app that probably uses that in some way. Um, so that, that's a bit different to kind of what we've had previously, but it's, two, it's, more, it's a two-hour thing. So that's a bit more of a commitment in terms of time. And probably in the evening. Yeah, in the evening, uh, in the evening, I would prefer it. Pardon? The two hours uh, with DevOps. Uh, what is DevOps? Was that? No, you said the, those two hours workshop, it, it would be, I would prefer it in the evening because I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think I think that just makes sense. I'll share a link to it in the chat. Um, and that gives a summary of it in a bit more detail. But maybe if, I mean, if we think that's kind of sounds like a potentially useful, interesting kind of, it's a bit of a different event. It might attract more people, it might attract less, but it will we'll learn from it either way. Um, and I think JFrog will kind of promote it a bit as well. So that's kind of a good thing about these talks with like JFrog. They've got their marketing machine behind it probably as well, because it helps them drive their business. Um, so there's that, I think. You know, feel free to kind of disagree with me here, by the way, but there's the workshop kind of idea, two hours, or I feel like the service mesh talk would probably be something that we haven't had yet recently in the past like year or, or so, or if at all, I'm not sure if I've had anything on service mesh. So, any thoughts? I don't have a strong preference. I'm kind of drawn to the workshop one, just um to see how that goes down with the audience or the the community um since we've been that yeah we've just tried the q a route um we've done i suppose you know your, your traditional conference style 40 to 50 minute presentation 10 to 15 minute questions at the end i suppose it's just kind of trying different things to see how it works out yeah i've got a feeling that the workshop idea would be better for like a Saturday. Two hours is already a big commitment for most people in the evening and most people's brains are fried after six in any case. So then you, you're going to have to so, sit there. Yeah. If you just have a one hour talk, you can sit there and sort of passively listen to things and take it in and may, maybe ask a few questions, but to, yeah. to sit actively doing something for two hours after a full day already. It, I mean, I, I, I would be up for that, but I'm, I'm not sure what numbers you would get for that. So in general, I, I agree. Um, experience tells me that numbers on a Saturday are very low. I like, agree mm -hmm. the ones that, I mean, I've run one before on a dot token. I think David was there actually and he joined and one other person. So like, it didn't get that hit. It might've been the topic rather than the timing though. These are things that are hard to kind of to know. Um, the other thing would be whether um, they would be available on a Saturday. Because this is their like, this is their job, so they probably generally do it within the time you know the time of their working day. Um, so that's I can explore it though. Maybe I should maybe I can go back to them and ask that question around like the idea of the workshop. Are there any kind of constraints around when it would run? Um, you know, in terms of day of the week, well, mainly I think time zones are factor. They'll be they'll definitely need to be in the evening anyway. So yeah. if it's on Saturday, it might end up having to be like six pm. So that's something to think about. <laughs> Um, like for us in the UK, Saturday like morning or something might work, or Saturday afternoon, but Saturday evening again, you're into your relaxing time, aren't you? Even if, if the Saturday day wasn't relaxing time, Saturday evening probably is. So that's, that's something to kind of that might constrain us with this specific kind of session. There's other people who, who are in different time zones where that wouldn't be a factor, but for this one, it'd be, it'd be like Saturday morning. Uh, when, when you've done Saturday, was it evening or morning? 
we did it in the morning. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is a point because uh, um, lunch break, I, I, can't, I can't do lunch break two hours, but in the evening, like you said, there is just time to I tried the evening session with a MongoDB. They right. have it and then I, I, halfway through, I just stopped because I, uh, I, I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> right. right. Uh, not, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we only, we only know by doing these things, don't we, ultimately, whether it would work on an evening and we'll get the temperature. I suppose the thing to kind of consider is that I suppose our Manchester community, it is an evening. Other places in the world, it's not an evening. We might get more people joining from, you know, different time zones and stuff. So, I mean, I'll go back to them and ask them about this anyway, but I think Saturday is going to be difficult for this specific talk just due to time zones, meaning it'd be Saturday evening. I mean, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't want to do it on a Saturday evening. <laughs> That's uh, probably my gut feeling as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go back and I'll, are we, are we saying in general, has any, anybody got a strong kind of feeling for something other than the workshop or should we explore that option? I, I, I don't know much about the service mesh side. I'd, I'd probably go with that but I, I do fancy the a two hour workshop but yeah it sounds a bit of fun hopefully yeah if, if Saturday's a bit a, a bad idea um then fine but it's not a bad idea it's just maybe impractical yeah I think yeah, Saturday, if you can do it Saturday mornings and I'd I'd be up I'd be up for that. It's kind of you can just get it done and it doesn't affect the rest of your weekend too much. <laughs> You know, that kind of thing. But but, I like uh, Saturday mornings too, but I'm a minority. <laughs> it's yeah. just, uh, I'll go with the flow with the majority. So okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out and I'll just explore that a little bit more and um, what that workshops. We had a good one on a Saturday when it was um, it was an in-person one with the, um, it was the people talking about what's coming up with Java and um, right. I think yeah. it was in booking, booking offices. It's quite yeah. good to... Um, was it Heather Van Curen? Yeah, was... yeah, that was. I think there's quite a lot of people at that one as well, but it might have been the the, the specific topic, and because it was, uh, you know, it's in Manchester, so it's nice. Yeah. To, I think it was sunny as well, so it's nice to. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just a couple of the other kind of future guests, then and where we don't want to kind of run out of time. So we've got. I've got a conversation. I started with Monica Beckwith, who works for Microsoft. And that she's uh, an expert around garbage collection in JVM. So I think there's potential for a talk there or a Q&A possibly. Um, I'm inclined to kind of maybe lean towards the talk side because there's, there's some kind of new things from like when GC have evolved, there's different kind of garbage collectors that are coming out. And I reckon a bit of a, for our community, just in general, we haven't really had much GC based talks. So having this bit of like, this is what garbage collection is and what it's about. And the different types of collectors and how it works, I think, might be quite a good kind of introduction. And maybe like these, what we've got to think about is like following these up with them with maybe a future events with a Q and A. So you kind of build that initial maybe relationship with these speakers, and if things go well, you know, we can look to right. Would you be interested in coming back and doing a bit more of a Q and A based type session? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. And we've got OWASP top ten. So that's for you. John. Um, yeah, um, I don't know what prompted that, to be honest. I can't remember now. Um, I just thought there's um, security seems to, maybe it's because of my work, security seems to always be uh, getting um, a bigger profile. Yeah. Um, and I thought it's an idea of a talk. Um, I don't know who we could probably get to give that. Um, yeah. I suppose OWASP was very specific, but it could be on uh, InfoSec in general. There's somebody in our community called um, Joe Carter. He works for a Manchester-based security company. I reckon it's worth me giving him a, a just a message and asking him. Like saying, we, we, you know, we're interested in having a security-based talk. Do you know anyone? Can you give it? You know, I'd, it'd be nice to get people from our community giving talks. So they, he might be up with giving something. I don't know. Was he at the uh, J Mank one? Yeah. 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 Because there was a, I don't know whether it's the same person, but somebody said they were a member of one of the OWASP chapters in the yeah, Northwest. I think it's him, to be honest, I think it's him. Uh, okay. And I, I think there is a meetup group for OWASP in the Northwest. And I did think about that as being a potential 
somebody we could reach out because it is northwest based. Yeah, yeah, the kind of crossover event maybe, you know. Also. Yeah, yeah. So it was just an idea for a, a long distance. I haven't got anybody in mind really with that. I'll take an action then to message Joe and like he's kind of generally quite kind of engaged with the community, especially when we have the in-person events. I and mean, I've not seen as much on the remote ones, but I'm, I'm sure he'd be happy to kind of help out if he can. Um, there was a talk on security I went to uh, just before lockdown at XP Manchester. And it's this guy back called Anthony Fielding. I think he lives um, around Manchester. But um, I've talked to him a couple of times afterwards. So if if um, you know, if that doesn't work out, I can always reach out to this guy. Um, he he, um, he works for Vericode at the moment, but he used to. He, he was having his own consultancy at the time. But uh, yeah, so I mean, reach out to him if needed. Yeah, you know, there's, there's maybe there's no harm in just doing that anyway. Uh, start, you know, have a little, yeah, open up a little kind of bit of dialogue with him about it. You know, we were, they were interested in trying to get something security focused. All right. And start the conversation. I and mean, it's not, you know, if we get both saying, yeah, <laughs> we've got two sessions, haven't we? Yeah. Or something, you know, we can kind of do a bit of a panel. We've talked about panels, so there might be something that kind of evolves from that if we've got more people who are kind of on it. A similar kind of domain that they're working in. Yeah, the talk he gave at, at XP Manchester is more about um, how um, you know you can fit security in to the like the, me- me- the de- de- development methodology. So, but um, right. yeah, it did come up with your old wasp stuff. So, uh, I'll ask him see if he's got anything he wants to <laughs> talk about as well. Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds good. Um, Opta, we've got the Opta planner and um, Jeffrey Bismet. So I think he, we're just waiting for some abstracts from him. Aren't we? Sorry, say that again. Um, are we waiting for a bit of information about what talk? Yeah, I approached him and spoke to him, um, and he seemed uh, very keen to give one. Um, he he said he's got a bunch of abstracts uh, of talks they've given. Um, so I said, send that over and we can discuss and kind of review what what makes sense he said he did mention one talk he's given recently um linking it in optoplanner which is kind of resource constraint uh resolver um mm-hmm. with quarkus because obviously he works for red hat um mm-hmm. so it's very involved or it's obviously works with quarkus um but he said he was going to send over some talk abstracts and i suggested the organizer's email address but he's not sent it yet so i'll give him a bit of time before i start to chase him up Right. That good. I yeah, did but... give, him the, give him the option and said, you know, because OptiPlanner is part of the KIE group in Red Hat. Um, mm-hmm. So I was kind of like, you know, it could be, it doesn't have to be OptiPlanner, but, you know, it is your project. So, you yeah. know, it is out there, but it could be on JBPM equally or one of the other technologies. Right. Yeah. I mean, we've got, because I've got a few little things on the go. Obviously, we've not got anything in the diary for our next kind of. Thought. So I don't know if anybody's got any other ideas of things that are there we might want to kind of explore. Um, got on the table. Um, no, not not for me. I've I've got a list somewhere of people that I'd like to speak to, but I don't think we could get that in place for the end of June. Yeah. Unless yeah. we just want to do a. a I wouldn't mind just a casual get together with everyone um, and people can just, I don't know, just a general talk. I, I don't know if that was raised before. Yeah. Um, maybe one thing that we talked about with the LJC actually, and maybe we could do this as a collaboration to be honest, um, was to set up some like lean coffee style events. So if you don't know what lean coffee is, it's a bit like an unconference, but it's condensed into like an hour or two hours and you turn up, you like maybe you have like a, a mural board or something that you just dump ideas on of things you want to talk about you don't vote on it so you all kind of say like, i'm interested in that that and that whatever comes out on top you have a discussion about it um so it's kind of a nice relaxed informal way of just generating some conversation around some topic of interest um, so that might be like a way of doing the sense you know achieving what you're thinking or does that would that be a bit it, it was more it was more of just 
Java developers in a, in a geographical area getting together and talking about really what's... No, no, it, it can be on, be on Zoom. Um, but just talking about what's going on, anything interesting, you know, anything that people want to talk about that they're building or any, any Java related news or that sort of thing. Right. It's sort of one of the reasons why I'm here really is to find out what other things people are working on, what sort of technology people are using, what sort of troubles they're bumping into, that sort of stuff. So sort of things that you don't really get from an official talk where people only talk about how great everything goes. Yeah. So you hear the uh, negatives. Yeah, yeah. I want I want the nitty gritty. I, I want what 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 it's really like to, you know, what why is JDBC such a bastard or you know stuff like that. So John's actually mentioned like something. Like, it feels like similar to what you've talked about before, John. With like the idea of a bit of a, in fact, podcast kind of discussion yeah. around current like topics, I suppose, in in the Java kind of community and what's going on. So maybe there's something like that. I suppose the. The thing with that is like the only thing just to kind of be not a problem but just be aware of is like the bigger the group you obviously can't it's hard to have everybody okay. talking and, and to kind of moderate that kind of session but maybe there's nothing stopping us kind of setting something up and like if, if we end up like five people like this we can just have a list of kind of topics and talk around them and you know see what comes out at the end, if it feels like it was useful, publish it on YouTube kind of thing. Um, That's what I was thinking about, kind of that podcast that, um, you know, you have a general set of questions or topics you're going to delve into, but you don't know where the conversation's going to go. Yeah. Yeah, should we, should we explore that a bit further then, like over the next week or so on Slack and just think about what that might look like? So I think there are, there are some challenges with it, if it's just an open you know, everybody join. Like, realistically, we probably won't get that many people if it's a problem. But if we do, and we end up with like 30 people, how do we moderate a conversation with 30? I don't think that's really going to work, unfortunately. Um, it feels like it's more of a panel session, yeah. maybe. You know, where you've got four people who, I suppose that's what that Java Council podcast was. I think it was three, four, five people each week or each. So, so maybe we kind of thinking about it kind of see a bit there'd be you know whoever out of this group wanted to attend could be part of that panel as well as part of the discussion but maybe we try and get some guests to join us as well and like someone like helen she'd probably be a really good person to be in that conversation as well just because of where she's working she'll be in she'll be in, she'll, be in, she'll know a few things around the industry that maybe we don't a bit more context um but then like maybe for some bit of news it's kind of reaching out to somebody who's connected to that news and trying to get them into the conversation. It's a bit like the q &A, but actually more generally wanting to be involved in a conversation about all kinds of things, not just the thing they're working on. Yeah, but it's, it's a good problem to have. You'd rather have more people turn up than like, you know, one person. <laughs> so. It, it is. Um, I just don't know about the practicalities of it. That's, in, in an in-person kind of meetup, you know, you, you might have like, you do like the fishbowl kind of approach where you have five chairs at the front and you just swap out people and you've got that, those people can talk at that time and it's a bit more kind of structured. And there might be ways of doing it effectively on a Zoom call, but maybe that's something you can explore and see if you can think of some ideas about how you might manage it. It, it, it feels like if you if you got the numbers, it would, it would be a, a better way of doing it on Zoom because you could have somebody else filtering out the questions. So you could you could cherry pick some of the more interesting ones rather than if it was in person, you've got no idea what the person's gonna ask. So. I don't know. It, it seems like something like that would lend itself better to Zoom, having one or two people maybe doing a lot of the talking and somebody else cherry picking questions from other people. But I'd be surprised if we got really big numbers, you know, like 30 plus people attending. I mean, uh, yeah, I would. Like, reality is it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, I was thinking but, that too. But if it does, so, I'll be But idea. more people you can, because I've been to this meeting, you can separate it in different chat groups. Is it Zoom my this couple couple of people? Who's interested in Quarkus going in this room and who's interested in um, Oak Tower security going in this chat group? Yeah, so that's kind of a bit like the lean coffee, I suppose, kind of approach. You could have people get together, you propose some topics, and if you're interested in that, you go in that breakout room or you can go in that breakout room and have that chat. So that, it is a format that I think is quite nice and could definitely work. Um, Let's, 
let's chat about it more, I think, on Slack. We're probably just going to probably like, explore it a bit further than what we're going to do. I think me asking this is probably a bar product of Slack not being very active. So if I think if Slack was, was if there were more people in Slack and more people asking questions and answering, I think that would probably negate the need for me to to want this avenue of speaking directly to people and asking what issues were. And oh, right. So yeah. So it's a bit. Yeah. So it's you, not, you see what I mean. Kind of review the current news in Java. It's more like I've got some problems. Can you help me understand this? Well, no, not not exactly like that. Or, like, or what have you, you experienced of this thing? Or like, yeah, yeah. Why 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 did you choose this library? And then everyone going, oh, Craig, you, you're a total muppet. You shouldn't be using that. You know, stop, stop using that. You need to be using this other thing or, or we had to use this and this is how we overcame it. But yeah. I, th I think, yeah, I think if there was more activity in, in, in the Slack channel, because I've, I've almost stopped asking questions because I feel like I'm just pestering everyone. Um, and, <laughs> and I don't think you should, because I think you've, every time you have, it's got a lot more wider audience people answering because people want to share those things. Yeah. I think you could, I personally think you know not yeah. everyone's willing to ask those questions but you are and I think that's good yeah yeah I, I don't mind feeling like a, a, a total idiot but um, I, I don't want to feel like I'm continuously mothering everyone like like a little kid tapping on your shoulder like you know I think the thing to kind of think about though is like if people don't want to answer they won't like if I didn't want to if I thought you were I didn't want to answer them, <laughs> them. Uh, but I don't. I answer them because yeah, it's, it's useful and it's interesting. And um, you know, we like to help each other. Essentially, that's what this community is about. Yeah, yeah, but I, f I find English people are, are almost overly polite sometimes. <laughs> it's still a thing that I haven't got over uh, since I've moved here. So, right. yeah. with yeah. VS Code, it's all about the extensions. It's all about finding good extensions with VS Code. That was one of the questions you asked about. Yeah, yeah, I, I still don't like. Close at the door I, I, again. <laughs> in fact, I, I think I hate it even more the, the more I've used it. Right. It, it just feels really buggy. I, I'm I'm not sure why it's so popular. I, I think it, I think it's just the, the cost. Yeah, it, it's not. I use it, but it's not like it, it can be. Yeah. So I'm I'm building UIs in React at the moment, and I'm I'm just not enjoying JavaScript and VS Code together. It just seems like an awkward couple. Right. Anyway, um, yeah, maybe this, we're getting into this session that you wanted. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll it, yeah, so I think just kind of getting back on to some of the things that are worth talking about. Then, so I think session wise, we could do with something sooner, but it might end up being end of July before. But it's summer, isn't it? You know, like it doesn't, we don't have to have an event in the month, it'd be nice to, but as long as we get something in the diary soon. That's the most important thing. We've got something to work towards and look forward to if anything comes up. I personally would like to explore that um, that kind of informal podcast. I was thinking, um, is it uh, is it Trisha that at uh, JetBrains that does the Java annotated monthly? Yeah, that's you could go through that and say that's the current news in yeah. the JVM industry. Like, does anybody know anything about these? It's, it'd be a great source of yeah. pointers. Point topics to talk about i don't know it, i i'm i i like that kind of session me personally so i'm i'm happy to explore that further yeah i, I think let's let's look into it um yeah i've got a few ideas like how we could do that there's like i suppose there's options isn't there you, you could kind of just get a select people together a few people together to talk about it you could open it up as an actual meetup and still have that select few people as the people speaking, the other people are just listeners and watching, and then we share it on kind of YouTube as yeah. well, like that. So there's different ways we can approach it. So maybe we're going to explore some of those options and weigh up the pros and cons of each and what we think. Or you could you could swap in people that are knowledgeable in that area. So like um, obviously Tim Yates working at, at Gradle. You know, if we had you know something, he, he could come in and take the lead on something like that. I think Gradle Seven has been released recently, like. Right, I'm a Maven user, so I'm I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> we could get um there is a guy uh in the community who lives more closer to me, he works for Summertype. I don't know whether he's involved um at, on the Maven tooling, but I don't think he is, but yeah. I thought it was like Gradle versus Maven. Yeah, versus Ant. Yeah, that'll be yeah. a, <laughs> a three way Mexican stand up. 
Um, so the other things that we've got on here, there was like website. So we kind of, I don't know if anything's happened on that. I know we've kind of done little bits, haven't we? Um, so I thought I had an extra day on this. I, for some reason, I had this session in my calendar for tomorrow. So I was hoping I'd get something to show by then, but. Right. So what's the, what's kind of, remind us, what's the current state and what we're working So what I thought I'd do to start off with, um, as I said, I'm looking to convert some kind of template to work with JBake. Um, so I picked one that I think would work well as a kind of, uh, jug kind of website um so i've i've kind of got a page converted um i was going to present that and kind of say here's what i've produced um here's how i think it could work for a, mm -hmm. a java community website see what people think about the design if people don't want to use it they want to go a different route that's fine um but i sort of just thought that would start the conversation going yeah. i think having something to show is always a good kind of stimulation for ideas and thoughts and and whatnot. Yeah, that, I mean that sounds good. I mean, is that something you you want to you feel is worthwhile doing as a like a a conversation on a on a call or something like that? Um, or I suppose I was going to take advantage of this yeah. session, but obviously I've missed that. Mm -hmm. Um, it can just be a case of I'll upload it to GitHub, and people can see what it looks like. Um, create some. Suppose examples of the scenarios that Craig has highlighted of ideas for content, how that would mock that up and go, right, that's how I envisage it could be done. Yeah. Um, and then see if we can start to create the structure of the site from that. It doesn't have to be the design, but I suppose I look at templates because I'm not exactly, I wouldn't call design my forte. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm, you know, if it, if it gets us up and running a bit easier, then that feels like a good thing. Yeah, so that was my idea. I suppose this content is king, isn't it? It's getting the content on the site. And that's what people come to the site for. Um, and I think that's you know, Craig's ideas of what he thought, what he felt should go on the site. And he's just trying to flesh that out. I'm having, I'm just kind of having some grand ideas in my head at the moment around like the idea of a community in a box. So almost like, Obviously, we're, we're doing this for Java community. If you think about it a bit more abstract, and if there was like a template that maybe didn't have, you know, necessarily the kind of look and feel of any community, it was a bit more generic, but you could overlay style onto it to make it, you know, your logo and stuff. But then anyone could use that and take that. It's open source. They could fork it and use it for themselves. But also then, all those kind of ideas we're talking about around maybe you, know, you drop a a new event kind of sort of YAML file into some location in the project and push it. And all of a sudden that does a number of things. It publishes it on your website, but it also starts to integrate with some other tools and, and make announcements about the event and things like that. And almost like kind of starting to automate the management of your little kind of community that's open source and separate to, and it has different exit points and hooked into, into things. Anyway, that's a bit of a kind of brain dump of some idea that's just kind of just floating around in my head then. Yeah, going back to that, I want to, I'm, you know, Andreas has got J Releaser, which yeah. looks absolutely amazing um, yeah. for the things it does. I would love to, that's another session I wouldn't mind getting him. And that's personally speaking, you know, getting him to present what J Releaser does to the audience. But I know he's also been on recently. Yeah, that's not a problem. I bet, I bet you we could get him on without, you know, in, in pretty short times, but if we wanted to explore getting them later this month or early July, I reckon we may be up for it. You never know as well. We can just have to ask, don't we? These things. Yeah. Say we're thinking, you know, because like, if you're thinking of it for JBakes, I suppose, and maybe we've got some other ideas around how we might use it for the community to release, like, not software, but events, then maybe yeah. that would be a really good thing just to get a an overview of it and just do it as a little meetup and share it as we normally do. I noticed he's just done um, a session with InfoQ on it as well. Right. So, yeah. It's, it's, becoming quite, it's becoming quite popular quite quickly from what I can see. Um, yeah. Do you, I mean, do you want to kind of, if you, if you want to chat about that, I, I'm happy to, but if you wanted to kind of do the... Yeah, that's fine. I'll reach out to him. Yeah. Cool. 
for example. So yeah, the, that's the website and stuff then. So yeah, I think getting something up, shared, and we can then talk about it. It's probably the first step, isn't it? And then take it from there. Just quickly okay. on the website, when when it comes to um, you know the, the work, I won't mind getting involved in it, some hands-on um, stuff for the website. You know, obviously not maybe not the you know the design of it, but if you've got if you've got tasks to do, I won't mind getting involved. I was just going to ask, are you on the? Um, are you, you're not part of the Manchester Scout Community Gitl Group, are you? I'm not. What's your um, what's your Gitl ID? Um, it's uh, Dave U. 1983. Right. And there's a picture of me, <laughs> hopefully. I'm inviting you in now. I'll do it. I'll, I'll get you invited into there, basically. Then you'll have, you know, as a and you'll be able to contribute and kind of do whatever. But yeah, we're, we're using the project in there to manage GitHub issues and stuff. So it's a case of, yeah, just hand up. Can I help out with that? I can cool. do that kind of thing. Just start getting involved. It's the best bet. Um, I'll get you added into that team. You'll see part of the, the group. Cool. It shouldn't be too much trouble. Um, so there's a couple of things on the round. There's like things around like process and booking guests, document booking guests. So I suppose this is where we probably want to put stuff on the wiki on our Manchester like on our GitHub group as well. Um, <laughs> the process is. Let's just kind of randomly do stuff. Um, I would say at the moment, but yeah, I think that there are, there are a few kind of logical steps to it. It's like, you know, maybe there's some kind of template we can even produce that gives us a nice way of introducing ourselves to people when it's like a cold introduction that we haven't even really spoken to before, um, which anyone can kind of send out and personalize a little bit for themselves. Because um, that was from you, was it, Craig? Is that what you were thinking? Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, just getting it just getting it documented and somebody like me who's reasonably new to the group and certainly new to booking people, I'm I'm just sort of making it up as I go along and just getting people to double check it it reads okay. Um yeah. well that's exactly what I've done for the past three or four years. Made it okay. <laughs> it's kind of you know, it, it's fine. I think there's there are some benefits to that, like as long as you're polite and you're kind of sensible, it's natural, isn't it? You know, you bring your own personality to it. Like, so while I was, I was saying it about having a template, you kind of lose some of that. Yeah, yeah it's sort of a mix between would be nice where we have a rough structure, maybe, um, I don't know, like a footer or something that we'd always have on the bottom, like mention the Twitter, mention the website, something like that. There might be uh, some stuff we can do actually that, like when we're trying to plan, like when we can you know our dates, maybe we should use something like there's these tools out there where you can do calendar booking and you say, right, we've got these dates available. Yeah. You choose what works for you. And then that allows us to schedule it in for them. Um, it's just because, again, it, I suppose it just takes it a little bit more kind of professionally, doesn't it? I suppose we don't want to get too professional. Uh, but at the same time, having some basic things that make our lives easier, but also their lives easier. Yeah. yeah. Signing up to something. Yeah, yeah. there is a little point there around like when events should happen. Like, at the moment, it's kind of just they happen when they happen. Pretty much generally on a Thursday, not always. Um, sometimes in the work, sometimes in the evening. And one thing I did, I think last time, this must have been 2019 when we were setting up this, we actually kind of put all the dates in the calendar for the year. Because that's because we had a venue and it was Auto Trader and it was last Thursday of every month. Obviously, Zoom's made it a bit more flexible. But we could do something similar to that and like plan a bit further ahead and say, these are our defined dates. Let's try and fill them. Yeah. Um, Proactively, yeah. Yeah. And not to say they're fixed and we have to do those dates. There might be there's some giving that, of course, but at least it gives us a bit of a plan and a schedule to kind of think about. So are, are we still going for one? one meet up a month are we okay if we have two like i, I, I don't it's not hard fast hard and fast really hard i said i say aiming for at least one is a good thing if we end up with speakers who want to talk and uh, both in the same month we shouldn't necessarily turn that down if we've got people who can run the events then it's okay isn't it yeah i, I didn't want people to get too i don't know meet up fatigue you know because i'm already going to <laughs> quite a few already with LJC and all the other stuff that I randomly bump into. 
So, but I don't know if, if, if two two meetups is, is will be too much for most people, or if they'll just pick and choose what's interesting for them. Yeah, well, I think if, if you think about what we've talked about today, we've got well, we've got this that we're going to do. So that's like one meetup. It's not a proper meetup, but it's still a meetup. There's potentially this idea of a bit of a discussion-based meetup, a bit like a podcast-style kind of current trends in Java type kind of discussions. So that would be one month. And then another one was a proper kind of talk or workshop gives us quite a lot of content anyway. So maybe that's you know, one speaker-led kind of session a month is probably all right. Something to aim for, isn't it? 12 a year to start with. And then it's a good problem to have, I suppose, if you've got more speakers than 12 to yeah. fit in. I realise time is past the half one, so I'm going to get off in a moment. Let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, we've got some about asking the community to get suggestions. So that's something that I think you mentioned like sending out some kind of newsletter and survey. So I don't know if you want to kind of take that there as an action or not. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. And Probably. then the other thing we need to do is the the post meetup form, formalize that. That would be good. Get feedback for speakers. Feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And this is all stuff like when you think about what I was saying before about uh, community in the box, having that automated as well, but that just happens after an event and kind of send feedback thing. I don't know if that's quite can be a bit trickier, but I'm assuming Meetup has an API that can be in code and stuff. So there's some nice little problems in here that like a lot of them go you know, with the software gets kind of. So we might there's some little open source opportunity contributions that we can work, you know, yeah, build our profile, build some little tools that do some cool and useful things that other people might also benefit from. And we could do a document in this as well, like who who's responsible for doing this, you know. Yeah. Think things that we should be doing and then and who who's currently responsible for doing it. Uh, this is the GitHub project. We need to like create a few probably don't we and assign them to people. That's our way of documenting. Yeah, we can drop it on the wiki as well. You know, yeah. Well yeah, there's two sides to it. There's probably issues when we're kind of just exploring what it is and when we decide making decisions and we want to kind of, you know, like formalize them, we can write into the wiki that this is what we do. Yeah, yeah, but I, it's like in, in my world, if I, if I don't document anything, it doesn't exist. So it's, that's for me, like the first thing you do is document it and then do the work. So it, it's sort of like that. I mean, I, I might fall off sharp edge or something like that. And then, so it'd be nice to, to write all this down. Like um, we do a newsletter that goes out every four months. Who's currently looking after that? Craig's doing that yeah. website. Who's looking after the website currently? That's Dave and John. Um, yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, domain currently that's purchased by Craig you know have it all documented down I mean it doesn't have to be war and peace it, you just literally have like what it is who's looking after it that sort of stuff yeah. who's the point who's the point of contact for that particular yeah. topic yeah yeah. No, I think that makes a lot of sense so I don't really agree um, and that's just we all <clears throat> we all should just kind of start start the interview like let's have what we think is relevant to the wiki and it might be a bit of a dump Something around to start with, but then we can get, give it some organization as it gets a bit busier. Yeah, just get the content down. We can make it look pretty afterwards. Exactly. Cool. Well, yeah, there'll be some nice stuff we can do with the website as well. Like the people who become like themselves who are involved put more prominently in the community, we can kind of make that more clear on the website, like around DP in the Java community type stuff. Um, hopefully, I'll get a bit of profiles of it. Which is Nice thing. Nice I just there. want interesting speakers. <laughs> well, unfortunately, your your profile may get raised at the same time as a side. Effect. No, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> it's, it's not. It, it'll be an unintentional side effect. That that's. It's not what I'm aiming for, really. I, no, I, I just want. I just want people on to to have interesting talks. If you go into it aiming for that, it probably it's probably hard if it happens. If you go into it because you're interested, passionate, and just want to be involved. Then it happens organically anyway. Mm. You'll find, you know, as much as even if you don't want it, obviously because you're involved, it is going to happen. So that's something to be aware of. Actually, like if you, the more you get involved in the community, mm. the, the kind of higher your profile will just naturally mm. be raised because you're become a prominent figure in the kind of local community. But it, it, it's it's really surprising to me. The more you dig around, the how many people are out there, like even in your local area, that are like involved at a at a, at a high level. Like it's it, it surprises me even now. I think I, I didn't even know these people existed. And like, 
the, the pretty high up at IBM or high up at Red Hat or, you know, something like that. And they're like living 20 minutes drive from me. So it's, yeah. it's a bit surreal sometimes when I, when I start thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's interesting. I remember when we did the first J-Man, somebody turned up from Microsoft. They were, they were a development advocate, so they kind of do like conference and stuff, but they were in at something in Ireland and they decided to come over to J-Man in Massimo. So I was like, this is absolutely crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw him on the door and I said, oh, have you travelled from far? And he went, yeah, just Seattle. Yeah. And I was like, oh, right, okay. Here's me thinking I've travelled far from North Wales. He's yeah. come over to yeah. Seattle. Oh, um, what, what was his name again? Brian? Brian Benz. Brian Benz, that's it. So it'd be good to kind of, I mean, one on this list was j Mank as well, with things to talk about. I think it's too early to kind of really talk too much about that. But yeah, I can't wait to do something like that again. I think this year is dead in the water, even if we just say it's not going to happen this year. Yeah, I think, mean, like, yeah. It, once, by the time we know whether it can happen, it's probably too late to get out. To book on. people on. And... It doesn't actually take much planning. Um, it's a bit of an unconference. <laughs> we, we might, the fact it's an unconference makes it easier. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we need probably want to update the website, but that website was something I threw together with GitHub pages like over a week or so back in the day. And to, to update for the next year, I just changed a few dates. And that was it, pretty much. And so, uh, yeah, I should have raised it as well. We we should probably look at getting that um, unindexed from Google because if you search for JMank, it brings up the old website, and then obviously it's it's a dead link. So right. I'll, I'll see I'll see if there's a way I can get that that removed. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Somebody would search for Jane Mike. That's that'd be crazy. I did, I did. So yeah, there's your use case. Yeah, no, I'm not really joking. It sounds kind of strange, but yeah, I suppose it, it will happen. Because that's what you, I suppose if you're using Chrome or anything, you just put it in your browser, bar, don't you? And it searches. So um, uh, Firefox use that. Um, yeah, same thing. Really. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Well, let's kind of leave it there then. Right, um, cool. If you're all okay with it, I'll share this onto YouTube anyways. Our discussion to watch back and that. Yeah, I can watch it back in 360p. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Nice one. Is there anything else from anyone? Not for me. No, I'll be in touch about the website because I'm working on it actively at the moment. There we are. All right. Cheers, all. Cheers. Thank you. Thank Later. you. Bye. Bye.